We've been talking about um, gas laws, and those describe um, the properties of a, of a single gas. So now we're going to talk about what happens if you have more than one gas mixed together. Lots of gas samples are mixtures instead of being a pure substance. Um, air is a mixture of gases. When we say dry air, we mean air that doesn't have um, humidity in it. So it doesn't have water vapor in it. So this is the composition of dry air, 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, then a tiny bit of argon, tiny bit of carbon dioxide, and then there's other gases in there as well, um, but in much, much smaller quantities. Um, many times we can think of a gas mixture as being a single gas, just one substance. Because, like, for example, air, um, we can measure the pressure, the volume, and the temperature of air as if it were a pure substance. And we can calculate the moles of molecules in an air sample, um, even though they're different molecules, because the identity of, of the gas molecules doesn't matter, because the size of them doesn't matter with all the empty space in between. So gases behave independently even when they're mixed together. So that brings us to a different kind of a gas law. This is called Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures, named for John Dalton. Um, and this says that the pressure of a single gas in a mixture, I'm sorry, that's not the expression of Dalton's Law. Um, that's the definition of partial pressure. So in, when you have a mixture of gases, each gas exerts a pressure um, on the container, the same pressure it would if it was all by itself in that container, and that's called the partial pressure. So we can calculate the pressure from an individual gas in a mixture. Um, here, and just an idea, uh, particular gas. So the pressure from a gas is the number of moles times R times T divided by V. That's just a rearrangement of the ideal gas law. So that's the pressure from one gas. Dalton's law of partial pressure says that the total pressure of a gas mixture is equal to the partial pressure of each individual gas mixture. So this is um, a little bit like, you know, say you have a box of fruit and there's apples and there's oranges and there's lemons in there. Well, the weight of the, of the fruit in the box is equal to the weight of the oranges plus the weight of the lemons plus the weight of the apples, right? So the pressure of a gas mixture is equal to the sum of the pressure from each gas. So P total is the total pressure of the mixture that's equal to the pressure from each component. And we can express the, express the pressure from each component in this way. The number of moles of gas A times RT over V plus the number of moles of gas B times RT over V, et cetera, for all the different gases in the mixture. Well, all of these gases are in the same container. R is always the same. It's a constant. The temperature is the same for all the gases in the sample, and the volume is the same. So we can factor RT out of this expression, and so we have the sum of the moles of each gas, that quantity times RT over V. So we can say that the total pressure is equal to the total number of moles times RT over V. Um, mole fraction. Uh, so mole fraction is given this uh, symbol. It's a Greek letter, chi. So chi of A, the mole fraction of A, equals the moles of gas A divided by the total number of moles in the sample. So it's a little bit like a percentage, but it's not multiplied by 100. So this is the fraction. It's a mole fraction because we're looking at moles. Moles of an individual gas divided by moles of the total gas. What is it used for? Um, we'll get to that. So if we look at the pressure from gas A, that equals the moles of gas A times RT over V. The total pressure in the mixture is the total number of gas moles 
moles of gas particles times RT over V. So we can cancel out the RT over V, and then we have the pressure of an individual gas, the partial pressure of an individual gas divided by the total pressure is equal to the mole fraction for that gas, the number of moles divided by the total number of moles. So if we know the partial pressure of the gas um, and the total pressure, we can figure out the mole fraction. Or if we know the total pressure and the mole fraction, we can figure out the partial pressure, et cetera. That brings us to this equation down here, um, which can be very useful. OK, so um, mole fraction is moles of one component divided by the total moles. And the partial pressure of a gas is equal to the mole fraction times the total pressure. Um, for gases, the mole fraction is the same as the percent by volume divided by 100. So if we say that nitrogen is 78% uh, of air, or air is 78% nitrogen, the mole the mole fraction is 0.78 because the moles and the volume are directly related. The volume of the gas is directly proportional to the number of moles. So if we know the percent composition of the gas and the total pressure, then we can find the partial pressures for each individual gas in the mixture. So let's do an example. To prevent the presence of air, noble gases are placed over highly reactive chemicals to act as inert blanketing gases. Um, a chemical engineer places a mixture of noble gases consisting of 5.50 grams of helium, 15 grams of neon, and 35 grams of krypton in a piston cylinder assembly at STP. Calculate the partial pressure of each gas. So we have uh, three gases here. We have helium, neon, and krypton. So what we want is we're looking for the partial pressure of helium, the partial pressure of neon, and the partial pressure of krypton. Dalton's law of partial pressure says that the sum of the partial pressures equals what? The total pressure of the gas. So if we add these three partial pressures together, we get the total pressure, P total. Do we know what the pressure of this gas sample is? What do the letters STP mean? Standard temperature and pressure. So it's kind of hiding, right? It's like disguised. So the pressure is given to us in those three letters, STP. We know that the total pressure is one atmosphere. The other thing we know about a mixture of gases is that the partial pressure for helium is going to equal the mole fraction of helium times the total pressure. I'm just going to call it PT instead of writing out total all the time. And if you think about this for a while, it makes sense. Because let's say helium is 50% of the gas mixture. Then it, it, it exerts 50% of the pressure of the gas. Well, mole fraction. So the mole fraction of helium is the number of moles of helium divided by the total number of moles. Did they give us the mole fraction? No, they gave us the mass of each gas. Not exactly real useful. Could we figure out how many moles of helium are in this mixture? Yeah, we just need the molar mass. So we have 5.50 grams of helium. We can convert that to moles. So we could find the moles of helium. We can also find the moles of neon and the moles of krypton. The total number of moles is the sum of those three. So this is one of those 
problems that you can't just take the numbers and plug them into an equation. You have to do stuff. Okay, so let's, let's calculate the number of moles of each of those gases. So the moles of helium is going to equal 5.50 grams of helium times one mole per 4.003 grams. That's the molar mass of helium. So 1.3739 moles of helium. And then we can do the same for the neon. We have 15 grams of neon. And the molar mass of neon is 20.18. So we've got 15 divided by 20.98, no, 20.18, 15 divided by 20.18, 0 0.74331 moles, and then we need the moles of krypton. So moles of krypton is 35 grams times one mole over 131, no, 83.80. So 35 divided by 83.8. 83.80, 0 0.41766 moles. So how do we find the total number of moles? Add them together. So I'm going to take this one, and this one, and this one, and add them together. 1.3739 plus 0 0.74331 plus 0 0.41766 equals. So our total number of moles is 2.53. Four eight seven, and um, if we're paying attention to sig figs, which we should, that's the last significant figure. So this is the total number of moles. I got that by adding these three numbers together. So the mole fraction of helium is the moles of helium divided by the total number of moles. So here's the moles of helium. So 1.3739 moles. And the units mole cancel out 1.3739 divided by 2.53487 equals 0 0.54200. No unit. So that's the mole fraction of helium. The pressure of helium is the mole fracture times the total pressure. Well, the total pressure is one atmosphere, so that's easy math. We've got 0 0.54200 times one atmosphere. When we say STP, we mean exactly. So we don't have to worry about the sig figs in the one. And so that tells me that the partial pressure from the helium is 0.542 atmospheres. So that's for the helium. For the neon, we're going to, that's not neon, neon's down here. 
for neon, we're going to take the moles of neon and divide by the total number of moles. I'm going to switch colors here because uh, it gets a little messy and confusing. So neon is neon is orange. Um, so that's 0 0.74331 moles divided by that same number, 2.53487 moles. Oops, I'm dividing by the wrong number. Ooh, that was weird. So I had a hiccup with my iPad. 29323 is the mole fraction. So we would take this, just like this, and multiply it by the total pressure. So that's going to give us 0.293 atmospheres for neon. For the krypton, we can do this same thing, or we could recognize that all the mole fractions have to add up to what? One. They all have to add up to one, right? So we could just subtract, right? Because we've, we know this one, and we know this one, and we know the total, so we could get krypton by subtracting. Kind of depends on what you want to do. I'm just going to keep on with the... Uh, multiplying. Somehow Krypton seems purple to me, so not sure why, but uh, so we could do it this way, 41766 moles divided by the total 2.53487 moles. That gives me um, 0.16476. That's the mole fraction, and when you multiply that um, by one atmosphere, you get 0.165 atmospheres after rounding. So let's add those up 0.542 plus 0.293. Plus 0.165. Ah, equals 1. Awesome. Sometimes it's just a tiny bit off because there's rounding things that happen. Any questions? To be successful in this class, you need to be able to write stuff down clearly. A problem like this is tricky for anybody to just keep in their head. I would not want to do this problem in my head. That would be scary. I would want to write this down. Now, I might not write it down. I mean, that doesn't look very careful. I might not be that organized. I could do it with just a few scribbles. But if you're going to make a few scribbles, you might as well put the units in and label stuff. And one of the reasons that you are supposed to be showing one sample for each calculation type that you do in lab in your notebook is so that when you go back to look at it later, you don't have to re-figure out how you did the calculation. You should have it all written out so you can just check it or if you needed to do that calculation again, it's just all figured out for you. But you have to be able to write stuff down. Any questions? Here's another one. A sample of hydrogen gas is mixed with water vapor. Water vapor is water in the gas state. 
The mixture has a total pressure of 755 torr, and the water vapor has a partial pressure of 24 torr. What amount in moles of hydrogen gas is contained in 1.55 liters of this mixture at 298 Kelvin? Well, let's take a look at this. So we have a mixture of gases. We have two gases. We have hydrogen and we have water. Okay, so we've got um, we've got water in the gas state and we've got hydrogen in the gas state. Those are mixed together. What they're telling us here is the total pressure, so P total, is 755 torr. The water vapor, so we'll call that PH2O, has a partial pressure of 24 torr. It's a T. That's a T. T for total. So P total, 755 torr. Partial pressure of water is uh, 24 torr. And then they're asking what amount in moles of hydrogen gas, so N of H2, the moles of hydrogen, that's what we want to find out. And then they've given us a couple of other things. They've given us um, 1.55 liters, so that's going to be a volume. And they've given us a temperature of 298 Kelvin. Well, we've found moles of gas before, right? What equation did we use before today? Ideal gas law, right? So PV equals nRT. We can rearrange that. N equals PV over RT. So to find the moles of hydrogen, we need the pressure the volume and the temperature in R is the Gauss, Gauss constant, the gas constant. Well, here's the volume and the temperature. What's the pressure? Well, we have a total pressure. If we use the total pressure in this equation, we're going to get the total number of moles of gas particles. That would be the water and the hydrogen together. That's not what we want. We want just the hydrogen. So we need the partial pressure of hydrogen. You just subtract it. You just subtract. The total is the sum of both parts. So the pressure of the water plus the pressure of the hydrogen. And this is... This is the part that is so simple that people can't do it. Because all the rest of it, is, it can't be that easy. Well, yeah, it is. So here we've got, we know we want pH2, and we've got pH2O, and we've got PT. All we do is subtract. So the partial pressure of hydrogen equals the total pressure minus the partial pressure of the water. So 755 torr minus 24 torr. Seven thirty-one. So that's the pressure of the hydrogen gas. So we have pressure. We have volume, we have temperature, we know what R is, so we can solve for N. Yeah? Does the pressure have to be in atmospheres? Yes, the pressure has to be in atmospheres. So we need to convert that. So let's do that. So the pressure of hydrogen is 731 torr, but we need to convert that to atmospheres because the ideal gas constant uses the unit atmospheres. So one atmosphere is exactly 760. So we take 731 divided by 760. 
zero point nine six one. Um, this should have three significant figures. Carry two extras, eight four atmospheres. So that's the pressure. So we have our pressure, and we have volume and temperature, and these are in the correct units already. So now we can solve. So the number of moles of hydrogen equals the partial pressure of hydrogen, 0.96184 atmospheres, times the volume, 1.55 liters, divided by R, 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin times the temperature, 298 Kelvin. We check the units, liters cancel, atmospheres cancel, Kelvin cancels. We're left with one over one over moles. So you flip that over and you get moles. 0.96184 times 1.55 divided by 0 0.08206 divided by 298. 0 0.06, 0 0.06965 moles. Three sig figs, remember those leading zeros are not significant figures. And so our answer is 0 0.06. Uh, one zero moles. We're keeping this place, the next digit, the decider tells us we have to round this up. So the nine rounds up to a 10, and so we get 0 0.0610. It's important to have that zero on the end. Any questions? So this concept of partial pressures does have some very practical applications. Uh, one of them is deep sea diving, which maybe doesn't pertain to very many people, um, but it has huge applications in deep sea diving. It also has applications in medicine, um, but we're going to talk about diving. Oh, there goes the screen again. Okay. Okay, we got the flashing to stop don't want to cause any seizures. So when a diver breathes compressed air, you've got um, a higher partial pressure. Because if the total pressure is higher and the composition of the gas is the same, then the partial pressure of each of the gases is the same. So if you're breathing um, a higher pressure of oxygen, then you get higher levels of oxygen in your blood, right? And you might think, well, hey, that, you know, oxygen's good. More oxygen is better, right? Well, to a certain point, it's fine. But too much of anything is toxic. Too much water can kill you, whether it's drowning or drinking it. Um, and too much oxygen can kill you. Oxygen toxicity uh, starts in where you get an oxygen partial pressure above 1.4 atmospheres. Now, we don't have to worry about that, because unless you're breathing pressurized air, that just can't even happen. But too little oxygen is also bad. Hypoxia. Hypo is a prefix that means below. So hypoxia means low oxygen. So that's oxygen starvation. And that happens when your oxygen pressures are too low. So there's this green safe area in here. Um, here is air at the surface. Uh, our air is 21% oxygen. So the mole fraction is 0.21, and you multiply that by the total pressure, one atmosphere, and you get a, um, a partial pressure of 0.21. This is a great, great partial pressure for, for humans to be breathing. Um, if you, you're breathing 100% oxygen at the surface, 
of water, like at, at sea level, that's also okay. But when you go diving below the surface, we talked about how the pressure of the water increases one atmosphere for every 10 meters. In order to be able to breathe, the pressure of the gas that you're breathing in the cylinder also has to increase. And so if you get down uh, to two atmospheres, so that would be, what, 10 meters below the surface? A pressure of two atmospheres? Um, then you can get into trouble with the oxygen, right? But if you go the other way and low, low pressure, you also get into trouble about 0.1 where you get hypoxia. And this is what happens if you go to high elevations, you can get elevation sickness um, or altitude sickness where you're not getting enough oxygen. So at the surface, um, a total pressure of one atmosphere for normal air, we've got 0.78 atmospheres of nitrogen and 0.21 atmospheres of oxygen. Um, if you have a partial pressure, I'm sorry, a total pressure of four atmospheres, um, now your oxygen pressure is getting up to 0.84, and so, you know, it's getting higher. What's getting even higher, though, is the nitrogen concentration. So here, the nitrogen partial pressure is 3.12 atmospheres. So too much nitrogen is also not good for you. You get nitrogen partial pressures above four atmospheres, um, and that calls, uh, can cause nitrogen narcosis, um, also called rapture of the deep. So basically, you're intoxicated on nitrogen. Um, similar symptoms to alcohol intoxication. You might say, well, what's wrong with that? Well, if you're several, you know, 10, I'm sorry, like, you know, several tens of meters below the surface, uh, do you want your judgment impaired? It's probably not a good idea. So how do you get around that? Well, when you go deep sea diving, you don't breathe compressed air. You breathe a different mixture. And so a deep sea diver will have two tanks, and as they go deeper and deeper, they'll gradually switch from the compressed air to a mixture like heliox. So heliox is a mixture of oxygen and helium. Helium doesn't have these effects on us like nitrogen does. So we use helium basically to cut the concentration of the oxygen. Um, heliox is going to have a mole fraction well, this particular mixture, a mole fraction of 0.05. So what would the total pressure of this heliox gas need to be so that the partial pressure of oxygen is 0.21 atmospheres? Well, oxygen mole fraction. So the mole fraction, chi O2, equals 0 0.050. There's no unit on that because it's a fraction. If we multiplied it by 100, it would be a percentage. And they're asking us, what's the total pressure? So P total equals question mark. And we want the partial pressure of oxygen to be 0 0.21 atmospheres. That's that uh, sweet spot for oxygen partial pressure. Well, we had an equation that used these three variables. So memorizing the equation is a great idea. You can also reason it out if you understand what's going on here. This is the mole fraction of oxygen and the total pressure. So the more oxygen there is, the higher the partial pressure of the oxygen. It's the mole fraction times the total. So we had that equation, the partial pressure of a gas in the mixture equals the mole fraction of the gas in that mixture times the total pressure. So we can rearrange this and see that the total pressure must be the pressure, partial pressure of the oxygen divided by the mole fraction. So 0.21 atmospheres divided by 0 0.050. Is 
So the total pressure must be 4.2 atmospheres. So that would be a little more than 30 meters below, as uh, one atmosphere per 10 meters, plus the one at the surface. Yeah. Any questions? Being able to do a calculation like this, if you, if you want to get an A in the class, you have to understand this stuff. Um, if you're just trying to squeak past with a C, um, a thorough understanding of this is not, not essential. But you really do need to get Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures under control, that the partial pressure of each gas adds up to the total pressure of the mixture. Any questions? When we collect gases that are given off in a reaction, like we had, um, we took a piece of copper wire and dissolved it in nitric acid, right? And this brown gas came off. Gases are, are a little difficult to work with because they just like go away, right? They spread out into the air, or in this case, we had the hoods on because we didn't want to breathe this gas. Um, and it just gets sucked up into the hood and it's gone. How do you collect that gas to measure how much was given off? Well, the simplest way is to bubble the gas through water into a container. It will displace the water, and then we can collect it. <coughs> let's, I think I, no picture? Oh, there's a picture. Okay, let's look at the picture, then we'll go back. So here we have a reaction between zinc and hydrochloric acid. Over here, this looks a lot like that mercury barometer setup. So here we have um, a glass container that was initially full of water inverted in a dish of water. And when you do that with water at a reasonable height, like less than 30 meters, um, the water doesn't come out at all. It just stays up there. So as this gas is generated, it's generating hydrogen gas, and we're not letting it escape into the atmosphere, we're directing it through this tubing um, under the edge of this container. And the gas is lighter, less dense than the water, and so it will float to the surface and bubble up, and then it will displace the water. So we can collect the hydrogen gas that's being given off by this, equation, by this reaction. But in this space, we do not have just hydrogen gas. We also have water vapor, because water evaporates. And so here we've got water evaporating, and so in here we have a mixture of two gases. We have water and the gas that we're collecting. Does that make sense? This is called collecting a gas over water. Hmm? How creative, yeah. Well, it's descriptive, right? So in that collected gas, you also have water vapor. The, um, the partial pressure of the water vapor, we call that the vapor pressure of water. That depends only on the temperature of the water. If the water is warmer, there's more water in the vapor state above that liquid. And because it depends only on the temperature, we can just look it up. If we know the temperature of the water, we can look up and find out what the partial pressure of the water is. So we use a table, something like this. This is um, a not very detailed one. The temperature increments uh, go by fives. Um, but we see at, at zero degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure of water is very low. And as we increase in temperature, <laughs> vapor pressure increases until at the boiling point the vapor pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure. So if you want to know what the partial pressure or the vapor pressure of water is at 30 degrees Celsius, you just go look it up in the table and oh, it's 31.86 millimeters of mercury. So here's another example. Um, a sample of acetylene is collected over water. The total gas pressure is 738 torr, and the volume is 523 milliliters. 
At the temperature of the gas, 23 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure of water is 21 torr. How many grams of acetylene are collected? You might say, well, why don't you just weigh it? Weighing gases is a lot more complicated than you might think. And we also have water in there. Okay. So we have a mixture of, of water and acetylene. So the total pressure is the partial pressure from the acetylene plus the partial pressure of the water. So I'm going to go through the, the problem and collect the numbers. So I've got 738 torr, and they identify that as the total gas pressure. So I'm going to call that P total. Um, the volume is 523 milliliters. Um, the temperature of the gas is 23 degrees Celsius. And the vapor pressure of water, that's the partial pressure of H2O, is 21 torr. The question is, how many grams of acetylene? Well, these letters here, P, V, and T, are making me think of the ideal gas law. I could use that information to calculate the moles of acetylene, right? If I know the moles and I'm given the formula, I could use the molar mass and calculate the grams. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to find the moles of acetylene. And we'll use the ideal gas law for that. The moles of acetylene are going to equal the pressure of the acetylene times the temperature divided by the ideal gas constant times the volume. What's the partial pressure of the acetylene? It's the total minus the other thing, right? Minus the water. So the partial pressure of the acetylene equals um, the total pressure minus the pressure of the water. So we've got 738 torr minus 21 torr. I'm pretty sure that's 717. You know, sometimes you you want to do stuff like that in your head. Always check it on your calculator. No, I'm looking at the temperature. Yeah, the temperature is is in the wrong unit, right? Yeah. So we've got our values now. We've got the partial pressure. We've got the volume and the temperature, but none of the units are right. Yeah. Uh, wasn't it PV over? Yeah. 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 Which part? Oh, thank you. Yes. Because PT would be physical therapy, therapy, and RV is a recreational vehicle, and that's not what we're talking about. Thank you for catching that. It would have shown up when I uh, screwed up the units, but yes. It's PV over RT. That's better. So we need to fix the units on these guys. Um, so milliliters, um, we can convert that to liters, 0.523 liters. Um, this is moving the decimal point three places. This is a small unit. Liter is a larger unit. So I'm going to move it in a way that makes the number smaller. So if that makes sense to you, awesome. If it doesn't, write out the whole thing. The temperature here, I need to convert that by adding 273, and so that's going to give me 296 Kelvin. Always have to have temperature in Kelvin, and the pressure needs to be in atmospheres, not torr, and so we're going to divide by 760. Seven seventeen divided by seven sixty. 
0.943, atmospheres. Now I have pressure, volume, and temperature in the correct units, so I can put them into my um, newly corrected equation here. There's a lot of numbers, there's a lot of letters, there's a lot of units. It's easy to get it mixed up, and that's it's just really important to write stuff down. 0.943, atmospheres. Volume in liters, 0.523, liters. Ideal gas constant, 0.0. 8206 liter atmospheres over mole kelvins and the temperature 296 kelvin. So 0 0.0203, 13 moles of acetylene. Now what do we need to do? We need to change that to grams. So we need the molar mass of acetylene. I'm going to move up to the top. Two times the mass of carbon plus two times the mass of hydrogen. Twenty six point oh three six point zero two zero three one three moles. I want grams, I put grams on top, moles on the bottom. Twenty six point zero three six grams per mole. Getting zero point five two eight eight six grams, which rounds two point five two nine grams. Any questions? Isn't that fun? <laughs> You're like, no, no, it's not fun. Oh, look, here's another one. This one looks long, doesn't it? It's got more words. No, I'm not going to skip it. <laughs> Common way to make hydrogen gas in the lab is to place a metal such as zinc in hydrochloric acid. The hydrochloric acid reacts with the metal to produce hydrogen gas, which is then collected over water. Suppose a student carries out this reaction and collects a total of 154.4 milliliters of gas at a pressure of 742 millimeters of mercury and a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. What mass of hydrogen gas in milligrams does the student collect? We're collecting a gas over water. We have a mixture. We have the hydrogen gas and we have water vapor. We're asked to find the amount of hydrogen gas, so we need the pressure of just the hydrogen gas. So what we have here is we have the partial pressure of hydrogen plus the partial pressure of water equals the total pressure. Here's our total pressure. What's the partial pressure of water? What's the vapor pressure of water? They didn't give it to us. Should we have memorized that? No. No. Um, if, you, if it's not given to you in a problem on the exam, there would be a table that you could look it up. So we need to go back and look it up in the table. Okay. 
So here at a temperature of 25 degrees, the vapor pressure of water is 23.78. 23.78. Twenty-three point seven eight, and that was given in tor, right? So that's the partial pressure of water, the vapor pressure of water. Is it hard to convert between tor and millimeters of mercury? No. No. They are different names for the exact same thing. So I'm just going to erase tor and write millimeters of mercury instead because my total pressure was given in millimeters of mercury. So the pressure of the hydrogen, which is the gas I'm interested in, is that total pressure, 742, minus the water, 23.78. So 742 minus 23.78. I got this 23 by going back a few slides and looking it up in a table. Okay. So I found the temperature is 25, and so you find 25 in the, in the table, and it tells you what the pressure is. So I'm getting 700. What do you think, guys? Yeah. Yeah. I just said that. Yeah, yeah I did. <laughs> yes, if you need the water vapor, or the vapor pressure for, for water on a test, it will either be given to you in the problem or there will be a table where you can look it up. So this is the pressure of, of water. And then I've got these other numbers here. I've got a volume. Volume is 154.4 milliliters. And the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Are those good units for doing gas calculations? No. So we're going to convert the temperature to Kelvin. Whoops, that's the answer, not what I'm adding. So that's 298 Kelvin. And we're going to convert this to milliliters. That's 0.1544. And we're going to convert it from milliliters to liters. And then our pressure needs to be in atmospheres. So you use the 760 so many times that you should just memorize it without even trying. So I've got the 718.22 divided by 760. 0 0.945, 0 0.02 atmospheres. So the moles of gas is equal to PV over RT. I've got everything I need now to calculate that. 0 0.94502 atmospheres times the volume 0.1544 liters. divided by the ideal gas constant, liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin, and the temperature, 298 Kelvin. Units, atmospheres cancel, liters cancel, Kelvins cancel. Point nine four five zero two times point one five four four divided by point oh eight two zero six divided by two ninety eight equals point zero zero five three three. Five three three five three. Moles. 
Is that my answer? No. Sometimes you feel like stopping there. It's like, yeah, I calculated something. Yay. Well, it's part of what I need, right? But I need the mass, and it specifies milligrams. OK, so I need some space. Because just going to an another page doesn't work so great. OK, so here I've got my moles, 0, 0, 5, 3, 3, 5, 3, moles of hydrogen. So I can convert that to grams of hydrogen using the molar mass. Hydrogen is a diatomic element. We need to use the 2.016. And then I want to go to milligrams, so I'm going to divide by grams and multiply by milligrams, and milli means 1 times 10 to the minus 3. So I've got my moles times 2.016 divided by 1, EE negative 3, 10.0. Five, six milligrams or 10.8 kilograms. Milligrams is a good unit there because it gives a reasonable number. If it was grams, it'd be as a really small number, 0 0.0108. Any questions?